3.0 stabilization audio equalizer adjustable UI and editing directly from your external drive but in today's video we're gonna talk about stabilization and we're gonna compare Luma Fusion's stabilization lock and load from core melt with Premiere Pro and Final Cut Pro's stabilization as well so we're gonna do some comparisons and then we're gonna go through the entire section of stabilization in Luma Fusion so I can run you through all the different things and what they do so you can get the best result when you are using this stabilization for your video. So without further ado, let's jump over to the comparison between Final Cut Pro, Luma Fusion and Premiere Pro. Let's start with Premiere Pro and let's see how long it takes Premiere Pro to stabilize this one minute clip. And after that, we're gonna take a look and see which of the three programs, Premiere Pro, Final Cut Pro or LumaFusion is stabilizing the best right out of the box without doing any additional tweaks. Now Premiere Pro is known to be very slow when it comes to stabilizing with the warp stabilizer. So I think we need to speed this up a little bit to get to the uh, point here or where we have the final result. And as we get towards the 2 minute and 20 second mark here, we can see that Premiere Pro stops at 2 minute and 27 seconds. That's a very long time for a 1 minute clip to be, so I think we're just gonna head over to Final Cut Pro right away to see how long Final Cut Pro 10 is using to stabilize the exact same footage. So we're gonna tap on stabilization here and we're gonna start the timer. We're also gonna speed this up a tiny bit here and it stops at 18.7 seconds. So 19 seconds did Final Cut Pro 10 use to stabilize the exact same footage with the exact same length. Now 18 seconds is fairly fast. Now let's move over to Luma Fusion to see how long it takes for the Core Melt plugin to stabilize the exact same footage in Luma Fusion. Now tapping on the stabilize button here, we can see the tracking dominant motion is going fairly fast and it stops in at around 14 seconds. So Luma Fusion is the clear winner of these three programs. Keep in mind that this is the stabilization applied right out of the box. We may need to do some additional tweaks to get the perfect stabilization and smooth image quality. But now let's take a look at the three separate video clips with the stabilization added from Premiere Pro, Final Cut Pro and Luma Fusion to see which of the three programs is stabilizing the best without doing any additional tweaks.
let's move over to the timeline on LumaFusion and let's take a look at a different clip to see how the different features and sliders and everything work with the lock and load uh, stabilization from Coremelt. So now that we moved over to Lima Fusion, I prepared three clips on the timeline. One of which is the typical vlog clip and one which is uh, walking straight forward whilst filming to the side. So we can test out the horizontal, vertical and rotational stabilization. And the last one is one clip walking straight forward where we have the typical footsteps. And we're going to see if we can remove most of these footsteps here to get a nice flow to the video as well. Now, moving to the first one here, let's start with this one and I'm going to duplicate this so we have a reference that we can take a look at later on to see before and after the stabilization applied. Now once we duplicated this I'm going to go into edit here and we can see that we have a new stabilize button down here on the bottom section. Now on the right hand side we can see we have the stabilization from lock and load and core melt and we have the stabilize button here. So to stabilize this we will have to tap on the stabilization button. Now this will track the dominant motion and as you've seen earlier in this video this is going extremely fast compared to Premiere Pro and a little bit faster than Final Cut Pro. Now on the right hand side here we have a few different settings that we can adjust to tweak the stabilization that we apply to our footage. Now on top here we have the basic stabilizer and the overall strength which is applying the total amount of uh, strength and smoothness that you want to have to your stabilization. Uh, we can leave this on 0.70 by default because it's doing such an amazing job and that allows us to go down and customize the horizontal, vertical and rotational strength later on. Now if we take this to zero we cannot adjust the horizontal, vertical and rotational strength so we need to apply some overall strength anyway. So keeping this on 0.70 which is the default we can then go down and customize and adjust the different settings down here under the advanced strength. Now we can push this all the way to zero to begin with and uh, if we go up again we see automatic shutter correction. Now this is for rolling shutter, so if you're filming with something like the Sony a7 III, which has a rolling shutter to fast movement of the camera, then you can apply this to help correct that as well. Now if we move down here to advanced scale, you have two different scale modes, smart and fixed scaling. Now smart mode is basically calculating and adjusting accordingly to your footage, trying to maintain most of your video within the frame. Now for the fixed scaling, this is basically uh, allowing you to control the amount of zoom that you want to apply to your image. Now if we go down to advanced margin, you can see that you can adjust the margin fill here with color or video and you can also choose the color of the margin fill. So if you want to have full control over the zoom of the uh, video and the stabilization, you can adjust this uh, by selecting fixed scale. And how this work is basically that you go and scale it down if you if you need to do that and you can change the color to something else let's say red and you can now have the red background here as your reference guide to see how much you want to zoom in to prevent the image going out of the frame you can also choose your uh, original video which is not going to be stabilized to be in the background here. So if you go to the beginning and do a playback here you can see the original video is playing in the background and you can see the stabilized footage is playing in the foreground here. So you can use this to blend these together if you want to do that. Now we're going to go back to smart scale mode because in my opinion this works really great and I can see most people using this scale mode because it basically does everything for you. Now let's move over and just close these here and go over to the advanced strength here where we can customize and adjust the amount of stabilization that we want to apply to our clip. Now a good tip here is to go to the beginning of the video to see which axis is needing stabilization. You can see that there is some issues with the rotational and the horizontal and actually the vertical as well which is the up and down. Now what's good about this is that you can actually do a playback while adjusting the settings. So 
if we go to the beginning and tap play, we can now apply the uh, stabilization to the rotational strength there. And immediately you can see that we applied the uh, stabilization and it got a whole lot smoother. So if we go to the beginning and do a playback here and then turn the stabilization off for the rotational strength here and then turn it on, you can see the edge here is more stabilized because this is the rotation that we just stabilized. Now we can move to the beginning again and do another playback and this time we're going to take the vertical strength and pull up just a tiny bit and you can also see that this improved everything drastically as well and let's do the final one which is the horizontal strength there so we're going to push this a little bit up maybe the rotational a little bit down and I think we have something right there so if we go to the beginning do a play turn off the stabilizer and then we apply the stabilizer now you can see that we have a more stabilized and smoother clip and the good thing here is that once you're done changing the settings of the advanced strength you can also do a final tweak here by going to the beginning do a playback and then you can change the overall strength here if you want to tweak it a little bit more. So I think we have the perfect result right there. So if we take a look at these side by side now, you will see that the left one is the stabilized one and the right one is the one without stabilization. Now this is directly from the previous screen and I'm gonna show you the rendered version uh, soon, but let's take a look at this and let's see how it stabilizes compared to the original. And you can see how much smoother this left clip is compared to the right one which, which has this small shakes and wiggles going on in the background here. Now let's move over to a different clip here which is a little bit harder to stabilize and this is from the GoPro Hero 9 where all the stabilization is turned off in camera. Let's go on and duplicate this as well and we're gonna go into edit and over to the stabilize button here and we're gonna add stabilize. Now let's take a look at this just with the basic stabilization here and let's see how smooth it stabilizes. It stabilizes quite well but you can see that we have some issues with the tree line over there and that's maybe something that we want to correct as well and you can especially see it right here. Now let's go over to the beginning again and uh, let's keep everything as it is here with the overall strength on uh, 0.70 which is the default. Let's go over to advanced strength and we're gonna pull the settings down here. And again, let's go to the beginning and do a playback here and see which of the different settings we want to correct. So rotational is definitely one and then we have the horizontal as well and the vertical just a tiny bit. So there you can see the difference between the stabilized, the non-stabilized clip and the stabilized clip. Now, another thing you can customize here is the zoom strength. The zoom strength is working really good if you have clips walking from side to side or you film something from side to side. If you have a clip where you are working straight forward, which we're gonna come to in a second, then the zoom strength might be pumping a little bit on your image and it might not look great at all because this is basically applying uh, stabilization to the inwards and outwards movement of your camera. So we're gonna keep this on zero and uh, we're gonna move over to our advanced scale here and we're gonna go to the beginning and do another playback. And if we take a look at the smart scaling here, we can push this down you can see the image is getting a little bit more stabilized because it zooms into the uh, video and then it stabilizes more around the image because um, that's what the calculation of the smart stabilization is doing. And if we pull this all the way up to one, you can see we get this pumping um, look to the image and this is not something which is uh, looking good. So if you want to maintain most of your video within the frame, you will need to have the smart scaling speed closer to the uh, one. So if we go over to play button again and do another playback, uh, we can see pushing this just a tiny bit down here until it stops. You can still see some pumping here. So around a 90 would be perfect for this. But again, the difference between this is if we go to the beginning, you can still see 
there is a lot of shake going on. So if we push this even further down, the shake is disappearing. So having this on around 50 in most cases will apply a perfect stabilization. We can also apply more overall strength to the clips here by pushing this a little bit up. And I think we have a really good result right there. So tapping play, the stabilized footage is to the left and the non-stabilized one is to the right. And you can really see the difference between these two clips, how well the lock and load stabilizer by Cormelt is stabilizing within LumaFusion. Now the last one, is the uh, walking straight forward and we have the footsteps here. So let's go on and see if we can remove those as well. So we're gonna go in and apply the uh, stabilization here. And again, it will track the dominant motion. So we have to wait for that. But this goes, like I said, fairly fast, which is amazing. And um, let's just take a look at this uh, right after we apply the basic stabilization without doing any tweaks here. So you can see it's already looking quite good and this is just by applying the stabilization and nothing else so let's go over to the vertical here we're going to apply the stabilization and over to uh, the one strength i'm going to pull these down and uh, we're going to take the vertical only so we're going to tap play then we're going to start with the vertical one which is the up and down and already here we can see massive changes in the result here. So this is without and this is with. Now we can also do something to the uh, uh, horizontal as well, apply a little bit of that and I think we have a perfect shot. Now you will always have some sort of footsteps in your image uh, if you're not using a gimbal or any other additional stabilization uh, accessories that can help you stabilize the footsteps or you are working with bent knees but this is a really really looking good. So let's do a comparison between these two as well. So tapping on play, you can see the difference between the stabilized one. The stabilized one is on the left and the non-stabilized one is on the right. Now this is shot with the stabilization built into the iPhone 12 Pro. So this wasn't too hard to stabilize, but you can still see the difference between these two clips. And this is also shot in 30 FPS. Uh, which is having a really nice stabilization to the built-in camera as well. Now, if we go into this clip, there is also a stabilization presets, which you can see here on the uh, top right corner as well. You have default strong and light, and you also have default strong and light with the shutter correction. So you can also play around with the, these and test these if you find anything which is good. But now, since I made this stabilization to this clip and it's looking extremely good, what I can do now is to go over to the uh, star with the plus and I can uh, save this as a preset. So I can save this as uh, stabilize uh, phone and let's just save that. And that will be placed here under the star on the top right corner. So we now have the stabilized phone right here. So if I move over to the bottom clip here, which is the clip uh, without any stabilization and I reset that and uh, let's go back into edit here and I do a playback can see that we have no stabilization added and if I go over to stabilize over to the star and apply the stabilize phone it will automatically track the dominant motion and once the uh, motion tracking is done we can do a playback of the clip and we can see the stabilization is now applied with the exact same settings that we uh, saved the preset with. So there you have a rundown of the Core Melt uh, Lock and Load Plugin Stabilization in Luma Fusion. And I must say it's really on par with Final Cut Pro and Premiere Pro. And this is a $30 flat fee, one-time purchase in App Store. And uh, Final Cut Pro is $300, I guess. I think, I think it was $300 when I got it. And that's a one-time fee as well, 300 bucks, and then you have it forever. Uh, whilst Premiere Pro, it's $10 recurring every single month for as long as you want to, you know, pay 
$10 a month. So that completes the sentence of LumaFusion being a really affordable and good application with now built-in stabilization, audio equalizer, adjustable UI, and editing directly from an external drive. So that's gonna be the end of today's video. Let me know down in the comment section below. Make sure to subscribe for the next up-to-date videos of the LumaFusion 3.0 features. So with that said, thanks for watching and I see you in the next video.